In recent years, you may have heard about a church in Pennsylvania holding services with nearly all congregants bearing AR-style weapons while adorned in lavish capes and crowns. Officially, the group is known as the World Peace and Unification Sanctuary Church, usually just shortened to Sanctuary Church. But they also go by another name, the Rod of Iron Ministries. Their stylized and militarized version of Christianity is certainly fascinating, a fascination that draws in new congregants, protesters, and plenty of media attention. But far more interesting is the story of how the strange Pennsylvania church came to be. Originally, I was going to cover a couple cults today, but once I looked a little closer, I realized that this story is pretty thick. It's a tale dating back to a post-World War II self-proclaimed messiah who formed a religion while building a billion-dollar empire. It's a story of abandonment, war, bigotry, bigamy, illegitimate children, illegitimate leaders, the channeling of the dead, the wedding of the dead, scandal, suicide, and much more. It was a church that at one time had millions of members worldwide married huge groups of strangers in mass weddings, and had friends in high places all around the world. So how did we get here? The Unification Church began in 1954 South Korea, when a man named Sun Myung Moon began preaching his own Confucian Christian mix-up religion with a strong emphasis in family values. Born in 1920, he grew up in what is now known as North Korea, in a family that had converted to Christianity. At the time, the country had long been under Japanese occupation. On Easter Sunday, 1936, Moon said Jesus appeared to him and told him that God had chosen him to establish the kingdom of heaven on earth, and it was after this that he changed his name to Sun Myung. He went off to engineering school in Japan in 1941, and in 1943, he moved back to Pyongyang, North Korea, and started to create a long line of children, legitimate and otherwise. For brevity's sake, we'll do a speed run of the first two women that bore his children. In 1944, he knocked up Wong Pak Choi, but abandoned her for a marriage arranged by his parents that same year. After marrying Sung Kil Choi, they had a son in 1946, but Moon's new wife did not accept his divine status, so he promptly moved in with a married woman named Kim Chang Hua, cucking her husband into sleeping in the next room with their kids. Speed run complete. In as many years, Moon had abandoned two women with newborn sons, and although Moon didn't marry or have children with Kim Chang Hua, She's extremely important to his path, and you'll soon see why. While Moon was completing his deadbeat dad speed run, two Japanese cities had been reduced to rubble, and the Japanese occupation had become the Korean War, a proxy war between the Soviets in the North backing communist rule and the US backing the South. While the South saw a newfound religious freedom, the North was not so keen on these kinds of human rights. In just a few years, more than 100 preachers and clergymen practicing in the North were taken into concentration camps or murdered outright. Moon, however, would be tossed into a similar labor camp in 1948 for something else entirely. He and his live-in wife were arrested for bigamy and adultery, acts that were still crimes in North Korea, and Moon received a five-year sentence. It would be cut short by UN troops liberating the site in 1950. Moon fled to South Korea, where true religious freedom was now a thing. The spiritual drought of the country inspired a flood of young Koreans to become Christians and they needed a place to worship. So in 1954, Moon started the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity in Seoul. Three years later, he published The Exposition of the Divine Principle, his own reinterpretation of the Bible. Those pages taught that Jesus was the second version of Adam, and like Adam, his true mission was to form the perfect union. But before he could find those beer-flavored nipples, some Jews led by a pilot hung him up as decoration. So now, 
it was up to Moon, the true Messiah. In the Divine Principles version of the book of Genesis, Eve not only ate of the forbidden fruit, but fucked Satan right there in the Garden of Eden, which was exactly how Adam and Eve had failed to create the perfect union. The book also had a section on Moon's background that lied about his own scandalous past and flipped his criminal record into that of religious persecution at the hands of communists. He would try again to form his perfect union in 1954 when he would have another son to a new woman named Kim Young Hee. It is unclear if there was an official marriage and she passed away shortly after. Much later in 1969, her son would also pass away when he stuck his head out of a moving train car window and struck a pole. Moon would later say that if the two had lived, they would have been the true mother and the first true child of the church. As mentioned before, the belief structure he was creating was grounded heavily in family values and marriage, so he was officially divorced from his first wife in 1957 in order to further clean up his image. 1960 brought yet another perfect union, this time with Hak Jahan. This would last until Moon's death and bear him 14 children, but it wouldn't stop him from fucking around. Outwardly, Moon was preaching the sanctity and commitment of marriage are paramount, and that people shouldn't bounce from partner to partner. He also taught that those married in his church were deemed the true children and granted access to the kingdom of heaven. Moon and Han became officially known as the true parents. Shortly after, in 1971, he moved his family to the U.S. to further his mission of spreading his message. They started conducting huge mass weddings, a ritual that would be a core component of his church. Many of these people were complete strangers, and the odd practice drew tons of media attention from all over. His followers at the time were lovingly referred to as Moonies, something that has since been deemed an offensive term, a fate shared by many English words in an effort to whittle down the human vocabulary into a single set of emojis. The mass marriages of the Moonies carried on for years as his congregation and wealth grew. You see, over the past couple of decades, he had been using his church's wealth to create a multinational business empire in the Americas and back in Asia. Under his umbrella of companies, Moon was producing ginseng, titanium, weapons, hotel chains, newspaper outlets, and even fishing fleets. Although his congregants were content, the U.S. government had some questions. In 1982, he was convicted of willingly submitting false federal income taxes and sentenced to 18 months in a federal prison. While in prison, he had the idea to start a newspaper to spread his values, and when he was released, he started the Washington Times. To everybody's surprise, in 1994, Moon put an end to the Unification Church and announced the start of the Family Federation for World Peace and Unification, or the FFWPU, in 1996 to take its place. No longer a religion, but a movement. One of his children, Preston Moon, stepped in to run things but the progressive changes that he made were rejected by the congregation, who at large were thrown by the whole idea of pivoting away from a religion, and the group began to fracture. In 1995, Moon's son Justin began an arms company in Pennsylvania using the wealth that his father had accumulated, Car Arms, and this will soon be relevant. 1997 saw an effort by Papa Moon to move his creation away from the unpopular changes that had been made and Preston's leadership. Moon granted his son Sean Moon and his wife Yana Moon the Holy Blessing, a preliminary move towards handing over the church to an heir. Because Sun Myung Moon had his own newspaper, he could use it to spin propaganda. In 2013, a double-page ad in the Washington Times featured endorsements from 36 dead presidents praising Sung Myung Moon's greatness as the Messiah. The very next year, Moon was crowned King of Peace by Republican Danny K. Davis of Illinois in a U.S. Senate building, showing just how far Moon's reach had grown. By 2006, 
Papa Moon figured his job was done and the rebranding tour was over. He moved back to Seoul, making him essentially inaccessible to the church leadership. His final move in the church was made in 2008 when he officially handed the reins down to Sean in a great coronation ceremony. Several, in fact. When Sung Myung Moon died in 2012, his estimated net worth was $900 million. His death kicked off a power struggle between U.S.-based Sean Moon, who had been handed the throne by True Father, and True Father's widow in Korea, the True Mother. In 2013, Hawk Jahan removed Sean and Justin from their roles in the church while she still had residual influence from her husband. And in response, Sean and his wife Yana began making plans to create their own church in Pennsylvania. Two years later, in 2015, the World Peace and Unification Sanctuary Church began. If this sounds like some kind of wild Korean soap opera to you, let's run through just some of the details that we skipped past before we get to the modern day Rod of Iron. Papa Moon had at least a fifth baby mama who he'd been sleeping with before he went to college. He finally succeeded at putting one in her after already having four kids with the true mother. That boy was raised by a friend of Moon's and grew up with a photo of Moon hanging on his wall, all without knowing it was his true father. The mother would be a very active member in the church for years. Moon's son from his first marriage went on to publicly denounce his father as a fake messiah after he and his mother spent years in the church. Throughout the early years of the church, there was many accusations of sexual rituals taking place. The woman he knocked up just a year previous, before his first marriage, would remain a staple in the church leadership and was known as the Great Mother, or Second Mother. When Moon took his final wife, 17-year-old Hak Jahan, he was 40 years old, and his 17-year-old bride-to-be was trained on how to act by the Great Mother. Moon and Han lost their third child shortly after birth. Their first son, an heir apparent, was a musician turned alcoholic and drug addict. After his ex-wife released a tell-all, his chances to run the church were taken away, and he died of a heart attack in 2008. Their son Richard would have been the next choice, but he died in 1984 when he rolled his jeep. At the time of his death, he had been engaged to marry the daughter of one of Moon's chief followers. After his death, it was decided that he would be posthumously married, as his father's teachings for quite some time had taught that only married people could get into heaven. The ceremony was also young Sean Moon and his wife's wedding as well, as joint marriages were kind of their thing, and it was how it was planned. Reverend Moon announced that his deceased son resides in heaven, where he holds superior position to Jesus. In 1988, a Unification Church member from Zimbabwe claimed to be the reincarnation of Richard Moon, Jesus' boss, and he was accepted as such by the leaders of the church for a while, before his controversial behavior of violent outbursts became public. After the death of Han Jahak's mother in 1989, Han began taking readings from a medium who claimed to channel her dead mother. This con artist gave her advice on running the church until 2015, and this was all a part of the doctrine. Moon and Han's kids Preston and Eun Jin both competed for Korea's equestrian Olympic team. Their son Nathan was a television actor, and their daughter Catherine Moon was on a show called Survival of the Richest and is now directing films of her own. Catherine and Victoria the two youngest of the 14 siblings also had a joint wedding ceremony, and both had living husbands for this event. Another son, Philip Moon, committed suicide by jumping off of a building in Reno, Nevada in 1999 when he was 21. Rod of Iron Sun Myung Moon had always been a sportsman, but it was his sons Justin and Sean who showed a real love for firearms. Justin Moon went to Harvard where he got an economics degree, and then he went to Miami University for his MBA. In his spare time, he was experimenting with his own firearm designs. Justin's dad was impressed, and after graduating, he gave him a $5 million loan to open Car Arms. 
car entered the market with a with its ultra compact 9mm pistol, the K9. Once the venture proved successful, it was absorbed into one of the many Unification Church subsidiaries. And in 1999, Carr acquired Auto Ordnance, the company that produced the original Tommy gun. And you can purchase one from Carr today. Once Father Moon died and the church split, Justin sided with his brother Sean and pulled his company from the Unification Church headquarters when he left. He joined his brother in Pennsylvania, who was steadily growing a small congregation. When Sean began his church in 2015, he took a page from his father's playbook and he created a new version of an important document. He published the Declaration of the Constitution of the United States of Chong Il Guk, symbolically distancing themselves from the authority of the American government. Next, he denounced his true mother's divine status and declared her the Whore of Babylon before posthumously marrying his father to one of the church's original followers, who then moved to Pennsylvania to be close to the church. Next, he decided that they needed a makeover, updating the church's logo with assault rifles and a sword, a clear message of the militaristic intentions that he expected from his new congregants. When he first started, Sean was preaching from his own living room but they quickly outgrew that and began renting the banquet room at the local Best Western. And Sean Moon's new followers were giving generously, with over a million in contributions in 2015 and 2016. Justin, who runs a foundation in their brother Philip's name, the Reno Jumper, also supports the church financially. The foundation purchased the plot of land where the first brick-and-mortar sanctuary church was built. That same time period saw success for car arms as well, with the ATF reporting that they sold over 40,000 pistols and just under 10,000 rifles in 2016. From a financial standpoint, you could say that the Sanctuary Church has quite a long runway. The group encouraged their followers to carry the rod of iron, to show their intentions to stand up and fight or die for their family and for their church should the need arise. Congregants, including children, partake in martial arts and firearms training to ensure that they are prepared for this scenario. They view Sean and his wife as their king and queen, terminology that's indoctrinated by the church itself. So the question is, where will Sean and Justin Moon take their gold-plated and cape-clad militia? Will they lead their father's church to a holy renaissance? Will they shoot a senator? Will they go the way of the Mormons, or the Branch Davidians, or something else entirely? In the past few years, the Sanctuary Church has been busy, and their current trajectory is troubling. In 2018, Sean took another page out of Papa Moon's playbook, when he began having lavish publicity stunt type services. But where Papa Moon had mass weddings full of strangers, Sean is now hosting large firearm-filled ceremonies. In the politically volatile United States, these services prompted extreme outrage and protest, a tension that it seems Sean Moon appreciates. During one particularly large service, an elementary school nearby even chose to close school for the day. In 2020, his church expanded, purchasing a 40-acre compound in Texas that they dubbed Liberty Rock. The intentions for the land are to create a safe environment for patriots that could be utilized during the imminent war with the deep state. Sean's far-right politics are at the forefront of this church and he makes no effort in hiding them. He told Vice that he believes God was working through Trump. On the ministry's Instagram, Sean posted a video of himself LARPing at the Capitol on January 6th. Sean Moon's church, like his father's, preaches inclusivity, while having an openly anti-LGBT agenda. Sean's has an extra element of being anti-government, so there are perceived enemies, or at least threats, to Sean's church. They believe that the end times are near, and this is the reason for their training, preparation, and dedication. Thanks guys for going down this Korean rabbit hole with me. 
It was quite an adventure. As always, let me thank my patrons, Buckethead, Tang, Shane Stangy, Jacob Cruz, Low Quality Music Productions, Holy Spirit, Sebastian, and Catherine. I want to remind everybody to like and subscribe if this is your kind of content. And if you hit the bell, you'll be notified every time one of these videos drop. Thanks for tuning in. Manic out.